Hey everybody, welcome into Star Wars Republic, our show about all things Star Wars here on the Arena Productions. I'm your host, Expat, along with my co-host, Burley. And we're talking about, of course, The Mandalorian. So, Season 3, Episode 4, The Foundling. So anyway, uh, how you doing, Burley? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm actually glad to talk about an episode that actually is fully Mandalorian. How about you? <laughs> yeah, fully Mandalorian. 33 minutes of Mandalorian, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of a short episode, though. I was a little surprised, yeah. but uh, yeah. I think it, this was shorter than the first episode of this season. Yeah, it, yeah. The season's been really weird with the run times. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, just to let all of you viewers know, of course, uh, a lot of our uh, shows here on the Arena Productions, uh, especially our recap episodes, we throw a lot of spoilers out there. So this is your spoiler warning. Uh, so we're going to be talking about spoilers throughout this episode of The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 4, The Foundling. So if you have not watched the episode on Disney Plus yet, please go and watch the episode and then come back and enjoy our recap uh, video here. So that is your spoiler warning. So with that said, let's begin, Burley. So let's get to our first image here. So good old Grogu in the sand. And and at first I thought these were just like stones in the sand. And then they start popping up and they're like little crab things. Hermit crabs, yeah. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. What did you think of that? I, I like the that I, I i i'll admit i was the same i thought oh there's just regular stones pebbles rocks on the on the sand oh hermit grabs yeah 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 that was cool and then of course you know mando he comes up and it's like training time and everything and then of course grogu he gets into his fight with the the the, the mandalorian kid that uh, got his helmet a couple of episodes ago and and it's like these like paint pellets it's like the paint pellet fight <laughs> Yeah, it's like you know, but just how Grogu jumps up in the air, you know, these like Jedi techniques, you know, jumping and floating and flipping in the air and stuff like that. I just, I don't know, man. The choreography there, it's kind oh, of that, weird. Well, yeah. that did not like I, 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 that did not look good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like so, like that looked like early two thousands, like you know, the cutaway for the jumps and stuff like that. That's what yeah. what it looked to me. But, yeah. but I do like the little thing of them. The kid's all cocky. He's like, this kid could barely do the weapon. And even bo just looks at Bando being like, he can't, like, what are you doing here? And he's like, no, 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 Grogu, don't hold back. Actually do it. And then he does the flip. And instead of just shooting one dart, he shoots all three at once and gets the kid. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, we get the this new beast and the, the thing the cool thing about the mandalorian and even since season one we've always gotten some kind of beast yeah. some new type of beast that we haven't seen in like the star wars universe before and so we get this uh this shriek hawk kind of creature and 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 in this image it kind of reminds me of like in uh house of the dragon like vagar you know like oh. the dragons you know and stuff like that but anyway of course, Vagar is much bigger and much more badass, but I mean, this Shriek Hawk thing, I mean, picks up the boy and just takes him away. And then like the, the Mandalorians start flying after him with their jetpacks and they figure out that their jetpacks uh, are going to run out of fuel. And so, but Bo-Katan, she's got the right idea. She's flying her, uh, her ship and finds out where the nest is and all. And so she's able to get them all together and to uh, come up with a plan to to secretly climb up the you know the mountainside and to stealthfully you know retrieve the boy. So what did you think of those scenes uh, in the episode, Burley? I, I like that. We we got we get a little bit more of the Mandalorian, uh, just of how they operate and them tell them, and them all jumping in and saying like, no, we do this, we have to do it go by ship we can't use our blasters and all this because you'll injure the child and all this and that so you're yeah. seeing how they're all willing to work together to get this child back i yeah. love that they're using both can tan ship and then get set up somewhere and they're like yeah we can't use our jetpacks because the noise will instantly trigger it and it'll yeah. know where we are yeah and it's interesting in this episode you know we're going to talk about bo katan Kree's more later in the episode but i mean the part where she's basically the leader of this uh of this mission and all 
And it's interesting how, you know, at night when they're they're sitting in the camp, you know, waiting for first light and like Bo is asking Mando, it's like, you know, can I take my helmet off? You know, because how do we eat? And, and Mando's like, you don't. You have to wait until everybody's, you know, out of sight, you know, and then you're by yourself and then you can take your helmet off and eat and all that. So uh, what did you think of that part of the episode? I liked it it's because we're going back to the Mandalorian lore and exploring and expanding it a bit more, which is nice. And you yeah. can just tell with Bo-Katan, she's like, really, I want to be a part of this. I got to wait for everyone. And like the, the big gunner guy that's right beside her in the image there saying to her, yeah. you have the honor of sitting by sta- sitting by the fire. Yeah. So you got to wait for all of us to clear up. Yeah. And, just, yeah. and, she, and, you, and you can see it when she takes off her helmet. She's like, ugh. Yeah. Why, yeah. Why, why am I a part of this? Yeah, well, it's going to be interesting later on. We'll talk about it later uh, uh, of, of like her role uh, with with this group. And uh, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll talk about that. But now we get to Grogu again. And of course, Grogu, he goes into the cave with the armor. And it's interesting how the armor is making him, a, making him another bl- a breastplate and all uh, out of the Veskar. And as she's doing it, of course, we get the uh, the flashback scenes again from you know the the prequels, obviously, yeah. and uh, of of course uh, episode three time, and uh, how the, the Jedi are Order sixty six, yeah, and how the Jedi are fighting the the clones there, and how Grogu is basically uh, you know rescued, and who rescues him? <laughs> the actor who played Jar Jar. I'm at best. I mean, I was just that was great that they put him in there. I mean, uh, yeah. kind of like a redemption for him in a sense oh, because oh, I mean, oh, for yeah. so many years, I mean, uh, he had taken so much backlash from portraying Jar Jar Binks. Uh, almost, I think it was almost to the point of him almost considering taking his life at some point. But uh, I mean, this is a cool redemption for him. And uh, yeah. yeah, he was a badass in, in the episode. I mean, taking out all those clones uh, and then obviously getting him to the uh, launch pad where some of the Naboo, uh, you know, uh, soldiers were waiting for him there. And of course, one of the Naboo ships, he was able to get Grogu off of uh, off of Coruscant and uh, sped him away. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if we get more of uh, the backstory and more of Ahmed Best uh, as the the Jedi Master here. Uh, what did you think of all of these scenes? I, I really like them, and it's nice to see this uh, the actor give given another another chance into Star Wars, and he played a great character. He did an he did an awesome job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I'm I'm so glad he got this chance because yeah. yeah, like he he took way too much. I like I never blamed him for any of the Jar Jar stuff because he was just the guy. He was cashing a paycheck. He came in and it, he was told, "You got to be this way." <laughs> if you want to blame anyone on that, that's Lucas. Yeah. So his name and uh, of course uh, Jedi Master Kelleran Beck. So uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens to him if they show any more of the backstory of Grogu. But uh, anyway, of course Grogu gets his breastplate and all and. Uh, and then we get back, uh, obviously, to, you know, uh, Bo-Katan Kreese and them. And uh, they're able to rescue the boy. And the Shriek Hawk had, like, three chick hatchlings. And they, they, they actually bring them back with them. And so they're, like, now they're, like, new foundlings or something. I just didn't get that part. I mean, yeah, that, that that was, like, one thing I just want to go, because when they're battling the thing to get the kid. Yeah. You have the one guy, they're getting close. Oh, okay, I'm going to jetpack in. But I'm going to jetpack right into his mouth. I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, my God, that that <laughs> just was, like, I'm just, like, rough, yeah. shaking my uh, head at that moment. That that yeah. looks so bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they took the chicks. I I thought they were gonna take them, and be like, "Hey, we've got food." Yeah, yeah. As thing, no, we've got yeah. new three new foundling. No, yeah, you're not like, gonna yeah. trade like. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Like, is are, are you trying to be a joke with it? If you're going for the comedic, okay, yeah. I can kind of understand that. But yeah. other than that, no. Yeah, and and, and it was kind of cool. Like at the end there, it's like when 
when they brought the Shriekhawk down, it was eaten by the same monster that they were fighting, like in the very first episode. You know, it was like yeah. the same type of monster, like coming out of the water there and just, you know, just just in swallowing it, almost swallowing it whole, basically. But uh, yeah, that monster is like, oh, you're going to give me a, you're going to give me food. All right. Yeah, I'll yeah. let you get. Thank you for the food. I'll leave you be for now. Yeah. OK, so let's get back to to Bo-Katan Kreese, because it, it, it almost seems to me like this entire season is about her. And. Uh, of course, she gets another shoulder plate uh, out of Veskar from the armorer. And she wants the, of course, the image of the mythosaur on that. Mm -hmm. And then she she brings up the myth mythosaur to the, the armorer. And obviously, you know, the armorer, you know, is obviously listening to her, but she she kind of comes across as having an in, indifferential disbelief. Mm -hmm whether or not it's actually true that she saw a true real mythosaur or not. But, uh, you know, Bo-Katan Kreez, she was, you know, you know, very truthful and honest with her. And uh, she's still trying to come to grips with the fact that they exist. Uh, and uh, what's interesting about this is how things are playing out in this season for her and how she could potentially become the leader of this whole, this whole clan, this whole group of, uh, of, you know, the, the of the children, you know? Uh, so I don't know. What, what do you think of her role as we go on through the season? Yeah, they're really, they, like you said, they're really bringing her up her role in this, this season so I wouldn't be surprised if we go, she either takes over this this uh, this clan of Mandalorian or she takes some of them and starts her own her own yeah. group and le leads. They're, they're heavily pushing her for the le lead. And I do like the, the back and forth between her and the armorer. Yeah. So that this is going to be interesting to see. Like, are we going to go back to pan planet Mandalore this season? Are we yeah. we're going to do some kind of search hunt for proof of this mythosaur? Yeah. Now, this is just a theory, Burley, but if if she shows them the mythosaur, takes him back to Mandalore and shows them the mythosaur. Obviously, uh, Emily Swallow, she plays the armorer. Do you mm -hmm. think she could persuade her and the others to take their helmet off? No. You, you're, you're never going to get them to take their head, helmet off, especially the armorer, because like when you think to stuff in, uh, I think this was in that whole tie-in episodes with Book of Boba Fett with the whole thing about taking off your 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 helmet. Uh -huh. I think you're you're never you're not going to get that. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I with the armor, <laughs> there there be like if if Bo Katan can take and take some of the people away and her make her own mandalorian clan group mm -hmm. um i think she can put in rules like that and some of those people would be more willing to follow up i i just see like the armor uh, is too set in the way yeah and will yeah. never change it's, it's ride or die well maybe if she sees that mythosaur maybe she will change her way who knows we shall see i don't know but uh yeah uh, you could be right maybe uh it's just uh there's no way, no way that she's ever going to take her helmet off. But anyway, interesting episode. And uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be interesting to see where the rest of the season goes. Uh, of course, obviously, we still uh, haven't got, uh, of course, uh, Giancarlo Esposito as Moff Gideon. He's supposed to be mm -hmm. in this season still as well. Uh, Christopher Lloyd is supposed to make a cameo appearance in the season we still haven't gotten him yet uh as well as tim meadows so uh yeah i'm um, hopefully that uh uh we'll be getting them soon uh, i think there's only four more episodes left in the season so uh we shall see anyway. yeah, uh, yeah. I, I i'm sure we'll get them i'm sure we'll get them next episode yeah maybe for yeah. for moff gideon i think they'll they'll do that next episode christopher lloyd not not too sure yeah yeah, we shall see. 
But anyway, that's been our recap of The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 4, yeah, The Foundling. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, we're looking forward to bringing you uh, the next episode next week uh, to uh, recap it for you here on the Arena Productions and uh, Star Wars Republic. And uh, we also have a Patreon, of course, uh, that uh, all of our content that goes up to our Patreon is ad-free. And we also have exclusive content there as well. So uh, please consider uh, checking out and uh, becoming a patron over there and uh, and obviously helping us defeat the Empire. <laughs> oh, no, it's over long there. live the Empire. <laughs> yeah. All right. So anyway, that's been our uh, episode. I've been your host, Expat, along with my co-host, Burley. We hope to catch you next week for the next episode of The Mandalorian. So take care, everyone, and may the Force be with you. Peace out. This is the way. Thank <laughs> you.